Hey, hey! So it is day 12 of the gratitude practice. Um, so yesterday I decided to kind of switch things up a little bit and basically take the weekends off, Saturday and Sunday, and this will give us a chance to, if you got behind, to catch up. And if not, just to solidify everything that we covered in one week. Or um, some of the days might have a little bit more um, digging, more depth than journaling that you might want to take time to do. So that gives you a couple of days to get that done. So day 12 is um, the topic is just continuing on the past four days, which um, covered how we think and how we focus to promote gratitude in our life. And then um, yesterday, or Saturday I should say, was um, being present, how to be present for um, living a life of gratitude. And today, day 12, we're going to talk about, because um, the first time was really kind of present in our thinking, and today we're going to go over um, being present with our hearts. So, and the theme verse that I've been using for this is um, from Proverbs 23, 7, um, which says, you know, um, which you've already covered the other, but the later half says, but his heart is not with you. So in this, um, the man was being generous, um, his words and his deeds, but his heart was not in it. Um, so we're going to look at um, where our hearts are and then how to engage them in a present way because his heart was not with him or um, with the man he was serving. So um, quick recap. Let's recap the last couple days because there's been quite a bit and we're just coming off the weekend and the break. So, when you take a moment for granted, that, that is the opposite of living in gratitude. For that moment, um, just because you do not appreciate the opportunity that that moment gives you. So, taking a moment for granted is the opposite of gratitude. Gratitude is born when you view the world and what you have from the perspective of abundance and choose to not focus on the areas that lack in your life. So side note here though, because I don't want anybody to misunderstand me, thinking and focusing on lack is very different than recognizing areas for growth in your life. Growth is positive and it, growth is recognizing potential. It's recognizing um, opportunity and it appreciates the opportunity. So when you recognize areas for growth, that is different than recognizing or focusing on and choosing to think upon areas that lack. So moving on, seeing your life through the colored lens of lack and want means you do not look at it as an opportunity, but rather a need. And that can be the difference that you can um, kind of use to differentiate those two. Needs tend to make us needy people. Needy people focus on what they can gain, get, take, or receive. Well, the problem with that, not, not only is it um, more blessed to give and receive, so you receive way more when you are a giver, not a taker. So um, when you show up as a giver, and the, half, the glass is half full versus half empty and a taker, you're gonna get way more than the half empty and the taker is anyway. Um, and the mindset of neediness focuses on what or who hasn't been given to them, what's lacking, what they would like instead of what they have, and basically whatever is not now in this moment, that's what they're focusing on. It focuses on other people's lives in comparison, we've talked about that, versus being genuinely grateful for their own life. It's always looking off to some, something someone, somewhere else. Um, for the lack um, or needy mindset comes from a mindset of entitlement, not that of being gifted. Um, just the fact that you are alive, and we covered this in day one, that you're alive and you're breathing is a gift, and don't ever take that for granted. Hey Megan, good to see you on here. So, this is all mindset, and 
focus work that we've been covering so far. We've been doing the past few days. Now let's go to the heart of the matter. So where is your heart? This is going to help you to be present in your heart. We've already covered how to be present in your mind in your life and how to cultivate that gratitude up here. But now we're going to work on the heart. Where is your heart? The man's heart, in the verse that I quoted up top, Proverbs 23, 7, the man's heart was not in his giving or his words from the verse. So you're not fooling your heart, even though you may say or do the right things. It doesn't mean your heart is there, okay? So let's not think that we can just say and do the right things. So how do we get to the heart? How do we get our hearts in the right place? Um, one of my favorite verses is from Proverbs 20, um, Proverbs 4, 23. I think that's the right reference. Um, it says, watch over your heart with all diligence, for from it flows the springs of life. So I think we cannot think that we can be idle and just let our hearts just kind of drift through life. We have to actually watch over our heart. And for me, personally, what this looks like is... It is um, being in tuned with my heart, with my emotions, things that I'm thinking to. Um, it is doing personal development. It is um, being open to looking deeper inside what's going in, on in my heart and knowing it. And sometimes, y'all, that can be a place that we don't like to go or we don't like to sit still enough to really look deep down inside and figure out what's going on in there. So taking the time out to do that. Um, journal, find find a quiet place that you can at least go and be still for 10 minutes and really get to like journal out all the thoughts that are really deep, deep in your heart. Okay, number two, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also, and that's from Matthew 6, 21. What do you value is number two. What is most dear to you? What um, could you not live without? what and and just on a piece of paper be really honest with yourself you know um, be really honest um, to what weight does um, the things that you're holding to how much weight does it carry in your life and what are they okay number three is where is your heart um, is it present past in the future. Hey Carol, thanks for jumping on here live. So the last question that you're going to ask is where is your heart? Is it in the present, past, or future? Um, and we've already touched on some of this in gratitude, but um, we talked about fear on one of the days, and fear tends to lock us in the past or in the future. Um, gratitude, we've already talked about this, is something that you can only live in the present because you're grateful at that moment. You can't be grateful in the past once it's already passed. Um, so if you had a bad situation happen, you can be grateful once you've seen maybe the good come out of it or whatever it is, but you're grateful in the present. You're also not grateful in the future until you get there. So gratitude is something you live in the present. So where's your heart? Is it in the present, past, or future? Or do you find yourself living past and future more than present? Um, just journal all of that um, for this week. Okay, and then I, just a little quote that I heard someone say once and it really struck home, but is be here now. So be here now. If you find yourself living in the past or the future, tell yourself, be here now. Let your heart be present with you in every moment so that you can also be grateful in your heart for every moment. Your heart can't be grateful for something in which it's not actually present. So the oils, and I know this is a, a kind of a hard challenge, y'all. Um, I've journaled a lot, and it's just, you know, it, this takes time. And if you want to cultivate a gratitude practice that really is life-changing, it's going to take some time. It's going to be some work. I'm sorry. Um, but the oils you can use during this gratitude practice that will help take down some barriers is black pepper. So I use black pepper on my heart. Um, you can use it diluted, but black pepper is great for taking you from repressed to being honest. Um, and sometimes I feel like we kind of repress or we have all the right, correct answers, 
that we know head knowledge this is right this is correct but is not always where our heart is and we need to open the honesty door to be honest with our heart and let our heart be honest to us because that's the only way that we can guide it and give it really good instruction okay so to be honest versus repressed you're going to use black pepper so I encourage you to use that every time that you want to sit down with pen and pencil um, and actually pull out some of the stuff in your heart or really think about those questions that I gave you um, and it will help you to kind of just be able to dive in deeper and be willing to even look deeper into your heart so keeping it honest getting honest look clary sage is the next one I used I have three oils that I'm using for this practice so clary sage clary sage is a great oil to take you from limited or lacking I would say if you have that view that you are limited or you're lacking in your life or um, whatever the story is it takes you from that to enlightened um, to maybe see the good that you do already have around you versus you thinking in the past the future or looking at everything else that you know we've already talked about in our focus um, it also is good for helping you to see what truly matters and make clarity there so look at what truly matters in your life this one's a great oil to also apply directly to your heart we're working with the heart here so we're gonna apply the oils to the heart okay on guard is the next one you want to use so on guard this is great for guarding not just your immune system I do love it for immune but it is great for guarding also emotionally um, and we're going to use it in this practice for guarding our hearts um, against temptation to chase after versus being present with the life you're in now um, there's nothing wrong about pursuing your dreams and your goals I definitely have some in my life and I think everybody should have some of those but you shouldn't be in a state where you are constantly chasing never there and never um, present and so guarding against the little um, the things that come up in life that often take us out of the moment that we're in and um, maybe steal our heart away which really if we really got a very honest and clear and lightened view on it we would not um, give that thing very much weight in our life and we certainly wouldn't let it call the shots so those are the oils to use for the journaling practice for today's um, just being present in your heart um, if you haven't watched the past four days before day 12, go back and watch those because this is not going to make a lot of sense unless you've done those. So that's how to um, start working with your heart to be present in your life. Be present now. If you have any questions, just drop them below. I'll be glad to answer. And then tomorrow is day 13 and you'll have to come back to see what that's about. So thanks for watching.